Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at the expansion pack for Storming the Gap World at War 85. Now this expansion pack for World at War 85, Storming the Gap, the first volume, includes three expansion packs in one big box. The first pack, The Defense of Frankfurt, adds massive scenarios to your World at War 85 experience. The second pack, Storm and Steel Second Wave, is based on the action in the novel that goes by the same name, and it adds a lot of counters, including check units to the mix. The third expansion pack might be the most unique of all three because it adds an entire dynamic campaign system to the World at War 85 experience. Let's open up the box and take a look at what's inside and offer up some thoughts on gameplay. Let's get started. A little bit of backdrop to the big picture item here. This Storming the Gap World at War 85 system is a hypothetical World War III system set in Germany where the Cold War has gone hot in 1985. So we've got Soviet, West German, East German, US, and in the expansion here, we add in Czech units as well, uh, all contending for control over Germany. Soviets are on the offensive, NATO forces are defending. So with that in mind, let's jump in and take a look at the expansion pack, but a reminder, you do need Storming the Gap, the base game, in order to play this. Uh, so don't get this by itself. So taking a quick look at the back just to get a general idea, there's a ton of stuff in here, and each one of these expansions adds kind of a different flavor to the game. And we'll talk about that as we get into it. But just as kind of an overview of what's here, over 500 counters, 22 maps, uh, two campaign maps, three scenario and module books, a player aids, uh, over 100 formation cards, and then data cards for all the units in the game and the base game. So we'll take a look at how all that works. Solitaire uh, playability says here a six. I think it might be a higher, actually six or six or seven. I think those formation cards are working really well for Solitaire. And there is a solo mode available separately that you can purchase separately for this system. Then complexity is a five. I, I think it's actually closer to a six. Um, the rules are clear and, and kind of evolved over their, their initial iteration. So I think the rule set is really good now. And uh, But it feels uh, still, it's modern combat. Combat. It feels a little bit higher than a five to me. But with that in mind, let's jump in and get started. I'm going to do this unboxing in a different way than I usually do. I'm going to show first the components in this box that apply to the entire game. Then I'm going to show the components for the Defense of Frankfurt, the stuff from Stormer Steel, and the stuff for Drive on Giessen. So we'll do four segments to this. Let's get started with segment number one. So what we're looking at right now, these are the pieces that apply to all three of the games and the base game. First up, you get an extra utility counter sheet. This is gonna be really handy because one of the scenarios, the defense of Frankfurt in particular, is massive. So I'm sure you're going to be needing more utility counters for this. Again, these are all three quarter inch, pre-rounded, printed on both sides with the same iconography on both sides to make it really easy to find them all the time. So that is a counter sheet that I think is gonna be very helpful for playing the game. Then, of course, you get the battalion cards, a big stack here of battalion, uh, sorry, the, the formation cards that apply to the games, all the, the expansions and the units and the formations that are gonna be used in the game. So these, uh, we've talked about these in the, in the, the, expand, the uh, unboxing kind of first look at the Storming the Gap base game, but this is the particular formation. And in the game, you're gonna be building up a deck of all the formations in the game. You mix them together for both sides, then you flip them over and that's the unit that's activated. This is the unit's morale, this is their command control and hexes, and this is the command control if they are disrupted. And this is the name there too. So no real reason to go through all of these, but there's one thing that I wanted to point out that applies to the defense of Frankfurt. Because as we start to look at the defense of Frankfurt, we're going to see that it is a massive scenario. I mean, it's huge. There are two of them in the expansion pack and it is massive. Lots of battalions uh, floating around here. And again, this is platoon level combat. The units are platoon, but the battalions and regiments are kind of the level that you're activating at. So you have an optional way to use formation activation for the defense of Frankfurt because there's so many on the, the map. Instead, you can use this level of activation which says activate all four battalions. So if it's your turn, you're gonna move four battalions worth of units, usually then the one that you would move. Or here is activate a single battalion from these four choices here. So it's a different way to manage the game that's been adopted for the larger scenario that's in the defense of Frankfurt. But those are our formation cards. Now now, this is pretty cool. We get three stacks of unit cards. Um, and these cover back the, the original base game, Storming the Gap. They kind of tag into like 
It's like, I feel like I'm looking at sports cards or even Pokemon cards. They're kind of cool to thumb through them and look at and things like that. These uh, have a lot of different information on them. You get the counter front and the counter back, the name. The part that I find I think is particularly helpful here is this right hand side that has the unit type and then any special functions. So all the special rules and the rule references that would apply to that unit. So I could see having these off to the side and having them handy as you're playing to be able to kind of reference the rules because Again, modern combat units do kind of unique and specialized things where they perform in specialized ways. And there's a good amount of information on the counter here uh, that you might need clarification on. In helicopters, again, for example, for this one, they, for they perform in special ways. There's some special rules that apply to them. And so this is the reference to those major rules that you want to be able to look up in case you've forgotten something. Down the bottom here, we have a range factor. And then the cost of the unit if you're using a battle generator system there, which is, I think, is, again, helpful. I'm not quite sure what 6mm, 15mm, and 28mm means. Is that millimeters for, for maybe perhaps a kind of a miniature style play where you use a hexless border? I'm not quite sure what, this is one inch, 2.5 inches, 4.5 inches. The only thing I can think of is that that's if you're playing it on a freestanding map, but I'm kind of curious as to why they're there. It does have the hex range here, which seems a little bit redundant because you've got it up there. So I'm not sure how helpful this part will be, the unit cost certainly, but this part in particular with the unit type and the special function, I think is gonna be very helpful. But these are cool, they look great. There's tons of them here. They cover every unit in the game. We can see the nationalities and all these kinds of stuff. Soviet units, it's got the front and the back. So I can see having these off to the side, especially for the rules references, that'll probably make them pretty valuable to use. But until you start to play, you're not really sure, but they certainly are well designed, they look cool, and it's kind of nice to have. So a big pile of those, I think there's 130 something of them in the game. So these are all the things that apply to all three scenario packs. Now let's jump in and take a look at Defensive Frankfurt. All right, Defensive Frankfurt by far has the tallest stack here. I've got everything stacked on here. We get a module and scenario rules booklet here, which is 38 pages. And here's the thing, the, the buzzword for the Defensive Frankfurt is huge scenarios. The whole expansion only has two scenarios, but you get eight maps and you get snow versions for them. So you get 16 maps or you can play it either in normal foliage or in winter mode. And if we look here at the scenario, scenario two, for example, hold the damn line here is a massive battle. Look at all the formations. That's right, I think we're at eight already. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's just the US side. 14, 15, 16, 17, I mean, it just goes on. That's West Germans there. Now we get to the Soviet units. And when we see here for the maps, eight maps, all geomorphic, and they can all fit together. So in addition to having, of course, this massive scenario, one of the benefits to this expansion in particular is that you get these eight maps that can expand the gameplay from the original one. So now you've got a lot more possibilities to work with in creating your own scenarios and generating your own scenarios. But again, yeah, this is scenario two is huge. Scenario one is equally large. Again, eight maps. This is a big battles. And that's when I get in and it looks on the, on the back of the box, it says playing time is one to two hours. There is no way that this is not designed for that. This is gonna be a longer, meatier, bigger experience. I, I don't have an idea for how long it's gonna take, but with all these units involved, and I think it is, yeah, here we go. So the game length is 20 turns. So again, most of them are 10 turns or so in the basic in the game, you know, eight, 10, 12 kinds of things like that. So this again, this is a, with all the units and all the turns, this is gonna be many hours. I would, just throwing a number out there, I bet it's at least six hours to play through one of these scenarios. It's a big, meaty experience. So that's really the buzzword behind the defense of Frankfurt. And so in addition to these scenario rules, you get uh, two counter sheets, they're all units. So here we have the US units. These are West German up here. Uh, these are the Soviet units down here. So lots more formations, again, basically to explain, expand the gameplay for a much larger scenario. And that's where you can see that this uh, utility counter sheet is gonna come in handy because with a big scenario like this, you're gonna need more of those to be able to play. So lots of neat stuff in here. I mean, these counters, again, really nice. They're all three quarter inch pre-rounded. They look great, look really cool. And it's really nice to expand the, the counter set. So in addition to, of course, playing for this scenario, you know, between the maps and the counters, you can now imagine there's a lot more possibilities for expanding off with the battle generator into your own scenarios as well. Here we have the unit, the unit um, data cards, the national unit tables with all of the information. Again, these are super handy reference, especially if you're uh, building out a scenario and things like that. It's great to see here again with the rule references off to the side. Uh, so these are really nice printed on both sides. There are two for the United States. 
uh, one for West Germany and then two for the Soviet Union. So we get a nice assembly of those. And now let's take a look. There are 16 maps, so I'm not going to show all of these, but I think if we take a look at two or three of them, we'll get a rough idea on what they are. The same size of the maps and the same hex size, so one inch hexes, same size as the, the maps for uh, the base game. So they're going to work really well and they all align geomorphically, so you'll be able to put them in here. And so this is map 37. And again, we get an idea for this kind of rural environment, lots of you know woods and stuff, villages scattered around. And then if we take a look at that, we can also see that it's the exact same map as 37 snow version. So here they are. This is the snow version of that map. I like the detail on these. Nice to have the big one inch hexes and the three quarter inch units. So, and again, stacking in this system is two, roughly two units. There are of course some, you know, headquarters can be added and support weapons and things like that, but you're not gonna have big, you know, huge stacks rolling around here. It's gonna be a, a stack light game. So that's map 37. Let's just take a couple look at a couple of the other ones to get a sense for what these maps and what type of combat it's gonna bring to the game. So here is 38. Again, we can see that's a big town. Wow, this is a big town up here. Farms and fields, got a nice big hill off on the side here. I mean, it just seems like, you know, in terms of generating and expanding your system, because this is really, I think more so than the scenarios and the individual scenarios you get with the game. One of the big things here is that you're kind of learning a system, you know, the way they're expanding off it with Blood and Fury coming out soon. Um, and all these expansions, it's really, creating a kind of a world for you to explore rather than just particular games to explore. Here is 38, the snow version. Let's just take a quick look at a couple more. Let's go upwards to 41. 41, big river down the middle, some woods. No altitude on this one, perfectly flat, but a nice big town off on the west side of it here. And some fields over here on the, on the east part of the map, cut by a forest line to block line of sight for sure. So very cool. And let's take a look at 39, the non-snow version. And again, the size on these 13 by 19 and they all will fit together. Now this is a, a kind of a thinner cardstock material. So if I'm playing with this, I'm probably gonna wanna drop plexiglass down on top of it uh, to be able to, to work with it. There's a massive hill in the middle of this one with the towns on the outside. I mean, just lots of variety of gameplay options that are gonna spawn. And there you go, there are 16 of them. Again, eight unique geographic uh, landscapes divided up into two kind of climate or two weather predicaments. So that's everything for the defense of Frankfurt. Let's move on to Storm and Steel Second Wave. So Storm and Steel Second Wave, not quite as much components as the first one, but I think the key word here is more. So this adds six, I'm going to say medium to larger scenarios, not by any means close to the size of Defense of Frankfurt, but there's some pretty big scenarios in here. And the battles are, are based after the Storm and Steel Second Wave novel which I'll put a link to it down below in the description. So there's a series of novels that align with this game. So in addition to kind of playing the game, if you want to read more about the, the kind of the, that uh, dramatic fictionalization of some of the battles in this. And my understanding is that the scenarios in here align with some of the events in that book. So you can be reading the book and then play the scenario from that book here. And with that, we get 36 here pages. Well, again, the, the very standard scenario layout where you get the maps and then you're getting the formations. The other element about this too, yes, well, we've got it here. This adds Czech units, so a whole new nationality to this. Uh, they use the same color as the East Germans, but um, it you know, adds a whole nother element of gameplay to the scenarios here. So again, we look at these, these are you know moderate size, I think. Some of them are larger, a couple small ones perhaps, but they all seem to be like medium and larger levels. So, you know, if you're looking for the introductory scenarios, I'd probably guide you back to the original base game. But yeah, really cool. Lots of different things in here. There are a couple of um, extra rules, advanced night fighting capabilities. I think that's in the base rules too, but there's just some notes on that too. And then combat engineers and assault is a, way, is a rule that gets added to this one as well. So that's our scenario book. Now we get two counter sheets as well. And again, all units, really cool. These are the Czech forces here off on the right hand side. Looks really cool. Again, they've used the same color as East Germany because I guess that you can probably imagine East Germans and Czechs won't be in the same battles, at least in this game here. So we got East German here, uh, sorry, Czech forces here. And these are West German forces over here in the gray. So lots of things, lots of new units and stuff like that. Again, all composed on those data cards. Really nice again, three quarter inch, uh, all pre-rounded, easy to punch out, and easy to use. So nice, great counter set here. And then we're starting to see a pattern here. This will break in the other one. These are the unit data cards, the national unit charts. So again, these are here for West Germany. And let's take a look here. Yeah, here's the one for 
Czechoslovakia. So very similar to Defense of Frankfurt and the base game, all of the information that you really need about the unit. So really kind of a great assistance for playing as well as the cost of the unit if you're gonna be building a battle generation system. Special functions referenced over here with their rules kind of listed as you go through these. So we have got one, two for Czechoslovakia and two for West Germany, the, the key units that are included in this game. You also get six more maps. So in addition to the 16 that's in there, you get six here, so 22 maps in total. These, again, are all geomorphic, 13 by 19, printed on the same material with one inch hexes. So it all fits in with the pre-existing system. Wow, this is a cool one. Hill over here, lots of woods. That's gonna be a whole different type of combat in this one. Then a big field in the middle with a small town. Pretty cool. And like we saw with um, the defense of Frankfurt, we get the non-snowy version. And then we get the same map here. So this is map 46 in its snowy brother. So same thing there. Let's take a look at one more. There's so many in here. We could spend a whole, um, kind of do a whole first look video on the, the maps themselves. But again, we can see here the theme, <laughs> woods. Look at that. My goodness, that's, that is massive there. Just a big glob of woods. And it looks like this is all up on a hill too. Very cool. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. So this one again, six scenarios, but again, more units, another nationality. The gameplay is tied to the novel, um, the, the Second Steel novel there, Second Wave novel there, so you can kind of reference the two as you're playing through. And that is our second item. All right, our last contestant, the Drive on Giessen. Now this is campaign system. This is an incredibly interesting and ambitious uh, expansion for the game. First, I want to explain it a little bit by taking a look at the campaign map because this will kind of explain what it is. So first up, the, the game takes, the place, or, takes place over three campaign days. Each day is divided up into four standard operational turns and a night turn. And so in each operational turn, it's a double blind system where both the NATO player and the Soviet player are going to be kind of plotting the movement of their battalions and helicopters and close air support and things like this on this campaign map. And then they ex execute those moves simultaneously We kind of figure out where everything ended up. And any area where units from both sides have ended up in, that's going to be a contested area. And you set up a, 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 ba a battle on the scenarios and generate some maps. And you fight it out there to see who's going to control over this particular zone. Now we can see the Soviet, un Soviet forces are going to start over here. Here's Giessen over here, their objective. So the Soviet forces are trying to make their way um, east to west to get over here. NATO forces are trying to prevent that. But you can see all of the zones here. And imagine how many battles are going to be spawned by this. This is a commitment to play this. But this is, if you like this system and you want to dig into something that's very different and got a very much more of kind of a, an operational level feel to it, rather than the tactical battles that you're getting with the game, this looks like such a fun thing to do. And I'm sure there's a way you could figure out to do it solo if you wanted to play it solo. But you have, if you have a buddy that would play this game with you on a regular basis for a while, I think this could be really cool. Just go back to that. You know, the, the box says one to two hours. You know, each scenario, sure, one to two hours maybe, but there is, this is, I'm gonna guess 50 to 60 hours to play through this. It's got to be that big, right? Because there's 12 operational turns plus an operational night turn, that's 15, and each one could generate like two or three battles. Yeah, that's a lot of gameplay in here. And so that's the operational level map here. You get another one for the Soviets. I'm not quite sure why there's two. I would think you'd only be using one. But then we get a very thin, there's like 15 page rule book here that has the campaign map. And then this is another way it outlines the uh, how you do the campaign setup and then the sequence of play. And the rules for the, se the campaign uh, operation are actually relatively straightforward. There's not much here. I read through these and they're really straightforward. It's just like, okay, I get it. How you set up battles, artillery support. Some of the cool things here too is like your offboard artillery support comes from zones that I think are adjacent to the ones you're in. So if you're fighting a battle here and you have artillery up here, you can use that artillery for your offboard artillery support. And you're moving helicopters up and close air support up to support it. So it's really got a whole system for fighting this game on a grand operational scale. Rules are laid out really nice and again, not much there. So so the, you know, the campaign layer to this, I think, is relatively easy to learn and easy to execute. We get a couple of player aids. These are really about all the counters that we'll take a look at that are unique to the operational level map. And then we get a sequence of play outline here, as well as a couple of other incidental tables to help with play. There is one for the Soviet forces, and then, of course, one for NATO forces. And then lastly, the Drive on Giessen has this special counter set 
One counter set here, printed on both sides as always, three quarter inch, uh, fully rounded so you don't have to clip any counters. These are all the counters that you use to, uh, for the operational map. So we've got these control counters here, blue and red. We've got contested zones here. That's gonna be a fight, stuff like that. You move your helicopter bases around on the map, map as well. And there's special road march movement orders so you can be uh, accelerated movement uh, by putting your units into road march formation. So various things like that. Your air recon, you can have a certain number of air recon that you can use each turn and you can lose these. So these are kind of your eyes to figure out what's going on on your opponent's side of the battlefield. Lots of stuff. So this looks really cool. I mean, this... This looks like this is going to be a ton of fun to dig into. Just such a big expansion and grand idea for this. So there we go. Defensive Frankfurt. Big scenarios. Storm and Seal second wave tied to the book. Adds check units and basically more, more, more. Drive on Gießen, the campaign version of this. All three of these expansions that were sold separately, all packed into one box. I'd be curious if anyone, I'm curious if anyone's played this, the campaign game, how they like it and how it works and things. Very interested about that one and people have maybe played Defensive Frankfurt. Let me know down in the comments below if you played it or if you're looking forward to picking it up and things like that. But this seems like if you like this system because you get all three of the expansions in one big box with tons of stuff. I mean, plus there's the added amount too that you just get all the extra counters and the extra maps that really kind of flesh out the system with the data cards to really kind of make your options for generating your own scenario is much, much bigger. So there we have it. Storm, uh, World at War, Storming the Gap, the expansion pack. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.